chair is against the wall. John has a long mustache. All right, today's the day. We're gonna bug out corporal style. Let's get to our spot and get her done. Okay, so here we are. A little bit of uh, light seepage or drizzleage going on, but it's supposed to clear up. So today's the day. I promise you my bug out bag video and I'm gonna give it to you. Now, trigger warning. Um, it will not be $500 like that previous crappy bug out bag or Amazon's most complete bag that I did. Some items are on the little high end because I want them to last, and some items are very inexpensive. So I tried to balance her out, but we were well under 500 bucks. And keep in mind that there is no one kit that fits all. These are our core items. You can get your version of these items and let it grow from there. very little or no work involved because my calories are going to be spent continuing the process of moving to my bug out location okay so let's get our heads wrapped around that we have a predetermined area that we're moving to everything in my pack I want to be as light as possible so I can move as fast as possible and when I set up I want it to be as simple as possible number one item I need something to carry all my equipment or carry my kit you want some type of very robust, heavy-duty backpack. Now, this one here is expensive. It's about 170 bucks. But get the one that works for you. An Alice pack from a flea market or a thrift store or even a surplus store. Um, I rolled with that for years, and I was very happy with it. My opinion, something at a minimum 25 liters, maximum 35 liters, because we're not going to go out there and live out in the woods indefinitely, okay? So something that size range will give you something like this, okay? In my opinion, 500 to 1,000 denier. Um, that's the thickness of the fabric and preferably water resistant, and you should be good to go. The Mora Bushcraft Black has a four inch blade, sharp 90 degree spine where you can process tinder or use it on a ferroseum rod and get sparks. Has a Scandi grind, the tang actually passes three quarter it's a rat tail means it's a little bit thinner and not as long and it stops about right here it's a very robust knife and i've seen very few of these actually break um 30 to 35 bucks and you'll be happy more bushcraft black moving on to my secondary knife my pocket knife now this can be substituted with a gerber or leatherman uh, multi-tool Whatever your preference is, but I want something as a backup. This is a Ranger Grip 78 by Victor Knox. We have a non-serrated three inch blade that can be opened right hand or left handed. We have a saw right here, a screwdriver. We have a bottle opener as well as a can opener and all and a Phillips head screwdriver. And the infamous, which means more than famous, toothpick and tweezers. Last but not least in this category of cutting tools, we have a Baco Laplander saw. Now, most of my videos, I've upgraded to the Silky Gomboy or Pocket Boy. I enjoy that blade profile a lot better. It cuts on the pole. This one cuts both directions. But the one thing about this, other than the price, we're talking 20 bucks, is the blade is very forgiving. It bends without snapping. And I've seen these things actually get bent like a 45 degrees and you can just bend them back and you can also resharpen these. So if you don't want to break the bank, but you want a quality item, Baco Laplander. I want something stainless steel, preferably with a wide mouth on here, and universal threads, meaning if I lose my lid and I find a new one, I can pop it on here. This right here is one US quart, and the threads are actually made to where it will take a clean canteen lid or a Nalgene bottle lid 
and the one with the little D-rings on them. So they're interchangeable. This right here allows me to have it as a canteen. I can carry a quart of water. And I can also boil the water and disinfect it and then carry more water. I can cook in this as well. The nesting cup is 25 ounces and has large bat wing handles on it right here. Cordage, if I have to tie something up, if I absolutely need this for something, I want to be able to have it. For this, we got a small roll of number 36 bank line. I believe there's like 100 plus feet on this. Shown this several times on my videos, I want some type of instant gratification. And for that, it's going to be a Bic lighter. First time, every time. Secondary be some type of ferrocium rod or ferro rod. The sparks that come off this are between three and 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit waterproof and I'm guaranteed like 10,000 strikes. So primary a Bic, secondary ferro rod. This is a bit pricey, Swagman roll. You can substitute a snug pack um, jungle blanket, but there's a lot more things I can do with this. So I prefer to pay once and then cry once versus buy something that I have to keep upgrading, but to each their own, um, I'm gonna give you options. You can actually use their toggles and attach them through the grommets right here and create an outer shell for a zip up sleeping bag. It will block the wind, guaranteed to keep the rain off of you and trap that body heat. The last thing on our list is gonna be a five by seven emergency blanket. This one's from Pathfinder or Self-Reliance Outfitters. It has a reflective side on here and I have used these over and over and over and over again. And in some of my videos, one lasted six months and one lasted a year. Now that Amazon tent that I use in my previous video, what, two videos ago, it tore apart after one use. It was garbage. And it cost the exact same price. I can do a lot more with this, including an A-frame configuration. So I'm gonna roll with this. Plastic, ABS, or aluminum stakes. It's your choice. Some people like aluminum, some like plastic. These cost probably less than 50 cents each. Like we talked about in the very beginning, something simple. This was already sitting here, it's pre-made shelter. Tossed a tarp over it, the most I did was cut a Y branch. Staked it out and we're good to go. Next two items I'm gonna combine because honestly, the only limit to what you can do with these items is your imagination. First one here is a three foot by three foot cotton shamog, 100% cotton. Um, this thing right here, you can do anything ranging from medical to making a sling or an actual uh, tourniquet to taking a piece of this material and basically charring it, making it a charred cloth for your next fire. Same thing goes for this one inch roll of Gorilla Brand duct tape. All the gear in my videos can be found in two places. One, my Amazon influencer page, and two, my Self-Reliance Outfitters influencer page. If you're interested in Corporal's Corner merchandise, that can be found on Teespring. All three links are found inside my description box. Next two items on my list is a Sunto MC2 base plate compass and Ranger beads or pacing beads. Now, before I say anything about this, if you have no idea how to use a compass, you need to get training before carrying one. The sole purpose of a compass is to walk a straight line. That's the main purpose. But the compass does so much more, okay? Um, we have a mirror on here that we can use for signaling, for rescue. We also have a magnifying glass or a sun lens to start fires. This compass can also give me the height 
of trees or hilltops. I can plot an azimuth or bearing and walk a direction. I can also get a reverse azimuth to come back where I came from. And I'm of the high opinion that if most people had training with a compass, just basic usage, a lot of people that become lost or dead wouldn't be. That's my opinion. Now the ranger beads or pacing beads, I suggest having these and knowing how to use them. For the simple fact that if you're bugging out and you're going somewhere, you need to keep track of distance as you walk. And that's what pacing beads and ranger beads do. Okay, there is 1,600 meters to a mile, and I would like to know how many meters I'm going. So to get training on both of these, I have videos. Just go to YouTube and search Corporal's Corner, Ranger Beads, Pacing Beads. I'll show you how to make these and use them. I'll also show you basic compass usage. So get some training and you'll be a lot better off. Now, if I have to move at night or do something at night, I wanna be hands-free, so I want a headlamp. This one right here is the Lead Lenser MH8 and I believe it's up to 600 lumens. Um, it's very, very well put together. I've had it for about three years. You can adjust from a wide beam down to a spotlight by turning this little lens right here. It's LED, it also has a strobe option. Um, downfall, there's no batteries for this. It's internal, so I have to recharge it. And I have to use their charger. I've covered this before. There's a small magnetic little, two little, I guess, nipples right here that you clip on their magnetic charger. If you don't have that, you're SOL. So avoid this if possible and get a good um, headlamp, minimum 100 lumens that takes AAA batteries. Okay, so the last thing on my list here, and there's several of them, is health and comfort. Meaning I don't need them to bug out, but it will make things a lot more enjoyable and actually make me healthier in the long run to get to where I wanna be. The first thing on the list there is food, and I'm going to choose Stowaway Gourmets. Until I find something better, I'm going with this every single time. It's a dehydrated, um, freeze-dried meal, weighs ounces. Every one of these packets is considered two meals, and this one right here is 750 calories per serving and 42 grams of protein. All you need is 1.5 cups of boiling water and wait 10 minutes. So I'm going to go with something like this. It's lightweight, and it will get me where I need to be and take that edge off. I want that instant gratification. I want some way to boil that water, to disinfect it right now, to get it in my food or back in my canteen. And for that, I'm gonna go with some type of either propane or butane blend. Bugging out to a location and we want that minimal calorie usage and we wanna go ahead and get the job done as simple and as fast as possible. If I have my propane or butane stove, I can fire it up and have coffee with a matter of probably about 30 seconds. And it will give me that extra energy, that caffeine boost, get me back on the trail and get me to where I need to be, or simply wake me up in the morning. So I'm gonna go with something instant that's instant gratification. This kit's available through Self Reliance Outfitters and it's meant for one person. We have burn dressing and scissors. The most important piece of any kit, a tourniquet, I can slap it on there, crank it down, it's locked in place, one and done. We have a four inch dressing, a smaller one right here, a few in the back, medical tape, and some alcohol prep pads. I've added tincture of iodine 2% to mine and with that I can chemically treat water to disinfect it or treat wounds and there's probably about five or six band-aids in here and the best part is when it's all said and done it probably weighs in my opinion maybe a pound you have the molly attachment on the back it can be tossed inside of a kit or attached to the outside All right, so we talked about disinfecting water using our propane butane stove. You can also build a fire. Um, downside, if you truly are out there stealth camping or you're stealthily bugging out, do you want a fire or any type of stove? Probably not. So I wanna show you a different option. This is the Sawyer Mini. I can go ahead and once again, it's instant gratification. I can take this, I can pop this tube in here, go down and get a quick drink from a stream or I can go ahead and use the bag that comes with it 
this is a small bag but it screws in at the top and then I can just slowly invert it and it will filter itself I can squeeze it and actually get the water into my mouth or into a container if I need to clean the filter out it comes with a syringe and you're looking at around 11 to 12 bucks This next item for health and comfort is optional. And I say optional because some people might want this and some people might not. Some version of a portable AM FM radio. This one right here gives you the option to charge it in the wall manually, or you can go ahead and crank it up for a good probably five minutes and use the power that way. It doubles as a power brick, so you can plug your phone or your headlamp into this. Um, but most importantly, we can have the option for solar, and it's an extra flashlight as well. The chair is against the wall. John has a long mustache. We're still talking health and comfort items. And again, health and comfort, do you need these items? No, but it makes your life a lot easier. If you're gonna rely on technology, say a cell phone, or in my case, I have a headlamp that requires a special charging unit that has to be plugged in and recharging their internal battery. It's really stupid, in my opinion, to leave home and bug out without having means of recharging those devices. So I've included a power brick. This one right here is very, very cheap. It's about 35 bucks on Amazon, but I've had it for over a year and I can charge my cell phone at least seven times. And last but not least, our accordion style ISO mat. This is by Thermarest Z Light. This is extremely optional because some people say it's too big, they don't want the strap to their back, it makes them a target, and I agree with that. Um, you see me take 55 gallon drum liners and fill them full of leaves. But the key to this is I want to bug out as simple and as light as possible. Alright, lamb stew. Cut that off MRE style. Oh yeah, look at this. That chunk of lamb right there. Mm. Again, hands down the best. Wow. Mm. If you like what you see here, please do me a favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. Then take it a step further. Grab your cell phone, download the free YouTube app, and sign in. This will give you push notifications when my new videos drop. That's what we're calling a five minute shelter right there. Find something ready made like this down tree, throw a tarp over it and stake her out. The other three minutes is spent pushing debris like leaves around the outsides to trap that body heat. We went ahead and decided on the fire tonight because we're admin, we're having a conversation. We're not out here escaping, evading. Um, it's a bug out video, but that's why I gave you options with that butane stove or a fire or both. Um, the sole purpose of this shelter is to trap your body heat with this fire one full step away. 
that heat's going to move right inside here and then, like a rotisserie, just go around me all night. Um, I'm already sweating sitting right here this close to it, so I can imagine all that heat just being trapped in there. So, it'll be a good night. I want to say a quick thank you to everybody who went over and checked out Steve Wallace or Camping with Steve on YouTube. Once again, that's Steve Wallace, Camping with Steve. Um, I believe 5,000 or so went over there and checked him out and subbed to his channel. I uh, appreciate that. He's a good dude. Um, if you haven't seen him, check him out. Now, while we're giving shout outs, I gave one a few weeks ago to Paul Hack, a fellow instructor and friend of mine. His channel is called Adaptable Survival, and he is struggling, struggling. For some reason, he just can't get subs. Um, let's give him a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Go over and check him out. If you haven't subbed to him, check him out on YouTube and give him a sub and a like on his videos. Adaptable Survival. I'd like to see him at 10,000 subs by the end of the year. So do me that solid. Check him out. Once again, it's Adaptable Survival. His name is Paul Hack. Check him out. Okay, so the fire is one full step away. And I can feel that heat hit me in the face. I can feel on my legs down here as well. So stoking that fire up, I'll probably get burned out of here. Um, I can actually slide down and be fully covered inside this shelter. I'm six foot one and that's a good seven feet. So no doubt in my mind, I'll be warm and comfy all night. So here's what it is. These simple shelters, I love them to death. This is probably one of my favorite and it's so simple, it's stupid. We have one Y branch. And that's it. Just to lift it up to get that heat. And if I wanted to, I could just take it down. But I'm digging this uh, design right here or this configuration. So with that, I'm going to soak up the fire. Get you all in the morning. Coffee time. Yeah. Nest crap fay. Always there when you don't need it. Okay, let's talk about this shelter and my bug out bag. This video right here was a version of a bug out bag that I would use. Um, again, bugging out is a predetermined location. I'm going from A to B and I want to get there as fast as possible with no screwing around. And I want to get there as light as possible. And everything in that kit needs to be user friendly, be multi-use, and be able to be set up in a matter of minutes. Like this two minute slash five minute shelter. Two minutes to set the tarp up, an extra three minutes to stake it out, and stuff leaves around the outside. Low profile shelter, trapping body heat, or heat from that campfire, and I was happy. I can take this down, fold it up, and hit that trail, and continue on down the road. Um, this is one reason why I prefer a tarp like this over, let's say, that Amazon broke-ass Snoopy house in the woods. That was a one-time emergency tent, and it was destroyed after one use. This is six months old, and you've seen it in several of my videos, and in my opinion, it's a lot more versatile. So I'm going to go with a 5x7 tarp for my area because it works for me. Now, the only suggestion I would give to you about a bug out bag is concentrate on these core items, scale them up or down to your liking, and then add to it for your climate and terrain. Oh, and the most important piece of kit, my jacket. Stuff everything inside the hood and it becomes a pillow. Learn that from my mentor, my boy, Dave Canterbury. Poncho jacket slash pillow in the woods. And there you go, solo overnight using the do-it-yourself bug out bag in the woods. 
more great things to come. With that, all the gear in my videos can be found in two places. One on my Amazon Influencer page and two on my Self Reliance Outfitters Influencer page. If you're interested in Corporal's Corner merchandise, that can be found on Teespring. All three links are found inside my description box. Now please do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. And as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun, I'm gonna catch you next time.